following Answers for Elders podcast features author, innovator, Alzheimer's and dementia family coach, Faith Marshall. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders as we are speaking with Alzheimer's and dementia expert, Faith Marshall. And Faith, we are talking this hour this is incredible time because we're talking about communicating with those with Alzheimer's dementia. And we talked in our first segment, for those of you that maybe just are joining us on our first segment about, you know, just kind of the framework and the structure of a mind of someone with dementia. We talked the last segment about, you know, just tips and communication and things like that. But we're going to go to the next step in this segment and talk about energy. Energy is so important in creating kind of a flow of communication because obviously if if dad or mom are you know obstinate or stubborn or things like that that we they run into or they have a reaction to something that's totally weird because that happens too <laughs> does it not faith yes it does <laughs> Yeah, so um, obviously, um, this is an important topic. So welcome back, Faith. And um, what do you, how, how do I, as a family member, think about energy? I, that's a hard thing to answer per person, but most people don't understand how our energy can shame, change mm -hmm. and alter a situation or a room. You've heard right. people talk about, oh, when so-and-so got here, it just it, it changed the energy in the room. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that happens because a person's presence can either change it to the negative if they've had a bad day and they're grumpy, or if they're very, very positive and exuding loving energy, mm -hmm. you can feel it. And most people don't recognize it, but some people do. Some people are mm -hmm. more energy sensitive than others. One of the fastest ways to shift the energy to positive is introducing music. Yes. And there's all these different frequencies of music that can be used as well. You can use YouTube and and have a calming background going that it doesn't have to be music that you're going to dance or sing to, but it can be a calming environment by presenting that in the background. And I mm -hmm. encourage people to maybe not keep the news talk radio on because that just has a different tone to it. Right. Uh, for some men, if you're listening to sports, that's very uplifting for them because it triggers memories of being at, a, for instance, a Seahawks game and the energy right. that you feel when you're in the stadium, right. just listening to that in the background or shifting to listening to a game. Maybe you have to record a game to play it again for them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I encourage people to try that, to shift that moment of obstinance that you might be encountering right you might have to park the whole idea of trying to get in the shower right now but just work on shifting the energy first so that then mm -hmm. you're you're in a more cooperative state well and i think you made a a really important um statement that when somebody enters the room and they can bring down the whole room if you're having a family gathering and mom or dad are in a mood it can change the whole dynamic of the mood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's almost better to ignore the mood <laughs> because that, you know, um, obviously, you know, those, that person in all my Tony Robbins experience, the person that is most committed to the emotional state is the one that will end up affecting the other person. So mm -hmm. you learn that in sales, you learn that in, you know, in any sort of area of influence is, you know, it, to a certain degree, even though somebody might be cranky, it's probably because they're fearful, mm -hmm. they might feel vulnerable, and that's their way of protecting themselves because they may not feel safe in the environment. And it may not have anything to do with the fact that, you know, the family members are that you're physically safe. It might mean that they're not necessarily tracking or having a good day. Mm -hmm. um, they might not feel good, <laughs> at, feel well, and they don't know how to explain it. I know my mom, um, whenever I knew right away when she was starting to get a UTI, mm -hmm. because that would trigger a higher degree of dementia and she'd start get the paranoia because yeah. she didn't feel good. And that was just how she operated. Yeah. So I know with with a lot of the times that we just don't think about little things like that of how can we 
specifically deal with the energy at hand. And part of that sometimes is the fact that just ignore the, the, the barbs and the, you know, the things that come out because those are normal, but just stay the course in a positive light. I mean, wouldn't you say that's true? Yeah. And, and we don't have to have a conversation to shift their energy. You can just no. turn on whatever music you think, you know, that helps them. Exactly. You can, you can use music with my mom because she was a dancer. We could, we knew which songs that she had learned to dance to mm -hmm. and she would, it would trigger, not consciously, but unconsciously, it would change, it would help to shift her mood. So yes. you just have to be mindful of the whole mm -hmm. environment, not yeah. just the conversation, the whole environment. Mm -hmm. um, pets are a really good indicator of what the energy is that's happening. If you've ever had a friend come to visit and you don't, you don't sense anything, but your dog inadvertently growls at them. And that's a big signal to listen to, or the dog will not leave them alone. They just love them. They're all climbing all over them because they love that energy. Using that as a gauge or an awareness, I guess, mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. is that we don't always realize what energy we're exuding. If we just had a crappy day at work, check yourself at the door before you come in to visit right. mom, because um, you're going to bring that in, into the room with you. So the, the tools that are best are music, um, art, smells, fragrances, yeah. fragrances yeah. can trigger a memory and a mm -hmm. calm. Um, for my mom, she loved Sierra perfume mm. and she stockpiled that stuff. My goodness. She had it in, she, <laughs> she heard it was going, they were, they were pulling it off the shelves. And so we found so much of the Sierra perfume. It was a very strong fragrance. I remember it but, well. <laughs> but sometimes I would put it on when I went to visit her and oh. it was a pleasant smell for her. I don't, I really don't believe she consciously realized it. You know, like she didn't say you're wearing my perfume like she would have before, but <laughs> you can use all kinds of things. Essential oils are wonderful. Lavender is very calming, diffusing oils. Um, just there's so many things that we can all learn about. And I'd love to be a resource for our listeners on that and have a, a list of things right. that you can try. Right. And right. it's not always about the pill the doctor gives them. There's so much more than we that we can do to help support. Well, them. and and you bring up so many valuable points because it really depends on your loved one. Think about again back to what we first talked about: is what are the things that are important to them? Um, my father was a, a ja you know a big band piano uh, player, and he played the piano amazing. Um, you know, he loved big band music. And of course, that was something that was important to dad. Mm -hmm. My mom, on the other hand, she was very artistic. And she would, she would, um, uh, you know, draw with oil pastels. And so mm -hmm. I remember getting her a art book. And she drew even like later in her life, she did these amazing pictures of her, you know, and, but then again, she used to be a knitter, and she tried to knit again, but that it, it was too much for her. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to try a little bit with trial and error mm -hmm. of see, you know, what will dial them into the mode. But I, it was amazing to me to watch her draw, um, to paint, you know, to quote unquote paint. And she did these amazing pictures, like better than I'd ever seen. And, but then as, of course, as things progressed in her life, then they got a little bit more and more bizarre. But, you know, and, and she would draw kind of the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting as well. Yeah. So. No, that's great. And uh, gardening can be another thing that can can ground them, depend, like, depending on what their favorite things are. Right. And, Raise flower uh, beds, though, everyone. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the memory book can come in handy with mm -hmm. knowing what their favorites are. And then, you know, sometimes it's not the family it's not the family that's dealing with them. So that's where those tools really do help with a caregiver. Yeah. Uh, I used to travel and send postcards to mom as to where I was. And the caregivers loved that because they would have the card and say, you know, she's in London right now. She'll be back. You know, it says she'll be back a certain date. 
But then mom would go off talking about her days in London because that was a distant memory for her that she could remember. So there's all kinds of tools that we can yeah. use. And, and I, I had someone, speaking of that, I had someone that actually prepared postcards way in advance before they left and they mm -hmm. left them with the nurse's station. Ah, there you go. <laughs> with memory care. And every day mom got a, a, a note from, from daughter because she was on vacation. That's and perfect. So, that was great. It was like, it took her like 20 minutes. So that was a family that I talked to. And I thought, wow, what a smart idea yeah. of the fact of just staying connected. And I'm, I'm st thinking of you and you're just making up stuff. They don't care. But yeah. it's the point of the matter of inclusion, again, yeah. Yeah. of making sure that you have some sort of an ability to to do that yeah. and and bring that um energy forward and i think the other thing just really to close out this segment we have about an, a minute left is i want to talk basically about your own energy when you walk in the door and and i think some of us are really busy we are on you know a type a you know we may be coming from work there we're in a hurry we're thinking about swinging by to see mom or dad you know before we go home and so we're just on an agenda right and it's really important i think is to stop before we walk in the door take a deep breath check out your own state because exactly. you talked about at the beginning of our segment about pal pets pick it up yeah. um our our loved one will pick it up you know even because we might be answering something too quickly right. or you know being being impatient because we're trying to get done it's like, you know, we have to take off the time clock and we have to take yeah. the time necessary. The best way to clear, your, for me, the best way to clear my energy is to three deep breaths. And I there say that go. because we don't realize that when we're anxious, we're not breathing correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not exhaling. So full exhaling. And sometimes I'll take my shoes off and just stand on the actual earth and or there's all kinds of things that people do, like carry right. grounding crystals in their pocket. And everybody's different, but you yeah. know best what your tool is that works for you. But checking yourself is a big thing. And just breathe. That doesn't matter. I'm leaving that in the parking lot and I'm walking in and I'm seeing mom. It doesn't matter that I burned dinner. It doesn't matter right. whatever happened. Uh, I just need to be present for mom and being present and being present in a loving way is the well, best Well, that's way. important. Yeah. And everyone, Faith will be right back to close up this hour right after this. Thank you. We would like to thank you for joining us in this podcast. Faith is here to support you and your family on this journey. She will help you to come together in harmony, creating the best team in advocating for your loved one's care. So call Faith at 855-363-2484 to receive a $200 gift card just by mentioning that you've heard these podcasts. Again, that number is 855-363-2484. And guess what? That spells Faith, 855-3-F-A-I-T-H.